all my stars and garters! There he is! Hello, and welcome to another one of my probably not great but good enough tutorials on how to mod Halo Reach on PC with the Master Chief Collection. Uh, today in this tutorial we will be I will be showing you how to create a marker on a, a vehicle's model and then use that marker to attach a turret that is also driver controllable to the vehicle. So without further ado, let's begin. So in this, for the sake of this tutorial, we're actually going to be using, oh, I'm going to be using a Pelican. I've already injected the Pelican and it is drivable by the player. But apart from that, there's been no other changes made to it so far. And the, the turret we're going to be adding to it is that we're going to be adding two rocket pods to the Pelican. And to do that we're actually going to be using the Warthog's rocket pods turret. But we can't use the default one because we're going to actually be modifying that. So the first thing we'll do is we're actually going to duplicate the vehicle tar. And I'm just going to name it Umibot. Look my tar in my Discord. Slash rocket pods. So we've duplicated that. We're then going to go to mode, and I'm just going to do what, click on the slash rocket in the search bar because it's easier. Mode, and we're going to choose rocket if I can find it. I suppose sometimes it's going to be a pain. Mode, warthog under slash rocket. We're going to duplicate that. Once again, rename it. Import slash rocket pods. Right. And then we're also going to do the exact same for the HLMT file. What I'll rocket and then rename it to what we want it to be. Right. Yeah, and now what we'll do is we'll just close off a uh, forge. Uh, for table and we'll reopen it just to make sure everything's reloaded and selectable. We're going to go to the vehicle tag block and as you can see we've got our objects, vehicles, and we've got rocket pods. We'll click on it and as you can see here we've got model HLMT but it's the default warthog. We're going to change that to objects, vehicles, and we've got rocket pods, the HLMT that we created. Once again we'll, be, we'll click the saddle to go to the HMT and we'll change the model which is the mode tag and we'll change that to once again rocket pods and we'll save that. So now we've got our separate rotor pods turret set up and ready for a bit of trial and error. We're now going to go to the Peloton tag and then we'll open up the HMT file and we'll also open up the mode file. We'll scroll down until we see marker groups and we're going to add two. Now these marker groups are used to define the positioning of things that are attached to the vehicle. So if we scroll through this you'll see a few things that you recognize like audio left, you've got your cargo positioning, you've got your cockpit, your cockpit nose, Apparently there's a train, you know, your effects, including your thrusters back and your thrusters down effects. And they've each got, they, those marker groups have actually got four individual markers because there's four rearward facing thrusters and there's four downward. And these markers are for the positioning of the effect. But you can see there's there's markers for just about every part of the peloton, including like, your driver seat, your passenger seats, like all these here as well. But if we go all the way down to the two that we created, you can see they're blank. There's no markers. We're just going to create one, reallocate the block, and then we'll do the same for rocket pods right. Oh, the other one. 
So we created the two, we created the marker blocks, and now we need to name them. So this the name is used for when you want to call upon that position. So we'll name this one R pod. Oh, I've got that. R pod left, and we'll name the other one R pod right. Put those with adding rocket pods. We'll press save, and it will ask. They're not in the trash now, and they will be either you want to continue or press yes. Now, obviously, these coordinates are blank, so we need to find the correct coordinates. So, what you the best fit, what you're going to do is you don't uh, just scroll through these and look for something you recognize that has and you know has coordinates close to where you want them to be. For the case of the rocket pods, I know 22 and 23 are what I want because that's the hard points on the wings. Hard point left, hard point right. So what we'll do is we'll copy the region index, the permutation index, the node index and the translation x, y and z coordinates to our new markers. So copy, paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste, and we'll do the same for the other one, which is 23, the right hand side. We'll copy that one. Transition X, 23. Transition Y, and Transition Z. Now for the sake of this we don't actually need to do anything with rotation just yet. Some vehicles you do, if you want to, if you wanted to just say add a machine gun turret to the, the Mondrus, that, that's one that would need a bit of rotation done. Change that. Negative one, negative one, and one. Negative one, negative one, and one. And we'll save that. So, we've got our marker set up now. It's a rough position, it's not exact, so we'll need to find that. But if we load into the map now, there'll be nothing in the position. So, what we'll do is we're going to go to the Pelican HLMT file. We'll see variants here, which we'll is leave on the default variant because that's all we need and we'll scroll down to see objects now as you can see it's actually got two already we've got spawn interior which is the interior and turret right but we're going to add two more our own ones we're going to reallocate two and add two so it goes to four we'll open up our new ones and we need to use our markers to crawl up on the position so that the game knows where to place the rocket pods. So for this one it's going to be R pod left and we'll set a child object to vehicle and we'll choose our rocket pods which is for me and we've got rocket pods and then we'll go to our other one and do R pod right and once again vehicle right rocket pods and we'll save that so now we can go into game. So just set that up and launch the map. Okay. Um, I'll go up to the front and up above on the top little bottom. And we'll go to vehicles and I've added it in. Um, you'll need to do it yourself, but I've added it in. And as you can see, we've got two rocket pods on the Belton. But they're not exactly in the position we want them in. And if you look here, you can see that the base of the turret is cl uh, clapping. And you'll also be able to see, you know, you can get into the rocket pods like a normal Warthog turret. And if the driver drifts in, 
you can't control them. So that's not that's not what we want. So we're going to use this rocket pod here as a as a reference. And do that, do that. I keep doing that, I don't know why I do that. That's actually really annoying. Put it to the side, there we go. So we'll use this rocket pod here as a reference. So if we go back to our power conduct mode, we go to our market routes and we'll set it to rocket pod right because that's the right hand side. So we've got our marker groups, which is X, Y, and Z, uh, their coordinates, and the way the coordinates work is this here is your X axis, this here is your Y axis, and this is your Z axis. Zero is the center, right? So on the X axis, zero is the center line. On the Y axis, zero is in the middle between the and the line. This bit, so. And roughly a zero would probably be roughly where that that point is there on the building and obviously you've got your Z which zero is roughly I think around about the 48 line. So we we'll take a look at our rocket pod right. Now if we look at our X axis this way, this is negative, this is positive. So we can try add in a little bit positive uh, Y axis to our rocket pod right and I'm just going to take a little guess and it might be the other way about that might be negative the other way might be positive so let's do negative 2.88 input change I think that was I think I think that's your negative that's your positive but it's not really right it's not that relevant right now yeah so negative positive I don't want to be confused but yeah I mean so that was actually that's a pretty good one. I've that's because of you know I've done this before. Uh, so we don't have, we don't have Y access for that one, right? So because it's a matter, if that's negative two point eight eight, we can safely assume that this one here, which is your rocket pod left, will be two point eight eight. We'll, res we'll port it and we'll respawn, and as you can see, the Y axis is pretty bang on. Might be a little bit off, but it's pretty bang on. So, we need to have a look at our other coordinates. So, for the X axis, it's actually pretty spot on. You know, it's it's pretty much in line with this half point mount here. You know, it's it's pretty spot on. So, we don't need to worry about the X axis. Now, what we need to do is use our Z axis, for which Rotate pod left and rotate pod right will be the same, so we'll set it and then that'll be it. I'm just going to choose negative 0 0.2. Right? We will. But yes. Yeah, so that's, once again, it's, it's, it's almost good, but it's a little bit. It's not quite there, it needs to go down a bit more, so maybe negative 2.5. Just so it isn't clipping through the power tool. Negative, negative 0 0.25, my bad. And then as you see, it's, it's clapping a little bit, so maybe negative 0 0.26 or negative 0 0.27. Let's do negative 0 0.27. And once that's right, we can, do, we can just copy it over to the other side. So, I mean, that's, that's not too bad. I could maybe go negative 3, but that's, that's quite alright, that's actually quite good. So what we'll do is we'll go to rocket pod right, and we'll change that to negative 0.27. We'll put the change, and as you can see, the position is pretty spot on. Now, obviously there's an issue here. We still have the base, the driver, can, the a person can still get in the runner seat and obviously the driver still can't control it. So to fix that what we'll do is we'll go to our rocket pods vehicle, we'll open up the HLMT and then we'll open up the mode. And in this case 
we're not going to be using the marker groups. Instead, when we're in the rotate pods mode, tar, we're going to go to nodes. And we're going to go through these entries, and I'm just going to go up next to it and put my view so you can see. So, if we go through this, we'll see all the different things that make up the, the rotate pods. And what we're going to do is, the only thing we're going to do to change is scale, right? Now unlike your marker groups, nodes, if you change a node and port the change, it takes effect immediately. It's an immediate change. So we're going to remove, we're just going to change the default scale to zero for the pedestal and port it. Nothing happens. It's because it's probably something that we don't really need. What about if we do hull? Do that. Port. There, nothing. What about turret mount base? Let's have a look at that one. Nothing again. Turret done. Now I think I might know what's wrong here. <laughs> I think I need, need a little reload and assembly because my rights actually be working. It might actually need TV respawn, that might be that. And it's then that's to put clutch again. Ah, oh, sometimes when you're making that, I see Swear, sometimes I stream. Yeah, so what I need to do is I'm going to need to end, end the game. Now, this here is a pain with assembly when you're working with assembly. If you're in the map, if you're loaded into the map in game and you try and save it with assembly, it will crash assembly and any changes you've made that are port but not saved will be lost. So the best way to do it is if you try to port a change and it's not taking effect, end the game and save your changes. Save every just I do this for every single tab, but every single tab of movement, I probably don't need to, but I like to be safe. Because it is an issue sometimes where sometimes it, it like, it's inside it loses its memory address, like, the memory addresses, and it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. So, we saved that, what well, we saved our changes, we'll reopen, assemb uh, for Chalo and assembly. After we've saved everything, and we'll just reload the map, and we'll go back into our rocket pods mode. Now that there's the issue there. That's another thing that can go wrong sometimes. Sometimes when you do save, it doesn't save properly. So as you can see, like the rocket pods that have been spawned are being used on the default HNT file. So if I spawn this right now, I can guarantee. The port changes will take will take effect now. So if something goes wrong, just make sure to check your H like your that the vehicle tag is using the correct HLMT and the HLMT is using the correct mode. Because it is that that does go wrong as well. So I'll say we'll go back to the rocket pause mode. And as you can see, default scales back to one. So we'll change that to zero. Nothing. What about hull? Change that to zero. Nothing. Aim patch, aim your mount base. There we go. So that's all that we want to take away. And as you can see, the base is gone and it looks just like it's mounted onto the peloton properly. So, we've got them set. But we've still got that. We've still we've removed the pedestal, but as you can see, still got in them. We don't want that. So to to sort that issue and also make them usable for the driver, we're going to go into the rotor pause vehicle tag. We're going to search for parent, and we're going to click on this little box here, and we're going to go to the second flags entry. We're going to scroll down until we see Arts as parent, as gunner for parent even. 
we'll put that changing in. We'll search for seats. And we'll do seat tag and we're going to go down and we're going to tick invalid for player. And we'll put that change. Now, if you try and get in it, you can't get in it. See? Nothing. And if you get in the Peloton, it might need a VD, it might need a respawn. It's usually working. Okay, something went on here. And oh yeah, I remember what I've done. I remember what I've not done. Uh, if, that, if this happens, what you need to remember to do as well is you need to go to the Peloton seat and you need to make sure runner is tapped. Which I've not done. <laughs> there we go. Now we go. Now we've got our rocket points. So, once again, let's respawn it. And it's then that stupid glitch again. There we go. Banshee, Peloton, then Bars. And as you can see, we have controllable rocket pods in a Peloton. Right. So once again, if you need to make sure you, if you're not in game and you're doing, if you're doing the steps before you go in game, make sure you save them. And if you are in game and you've poked changes, right, and you've poked your changes before you try to save, make sure to close the map in game. If you don't. What will happen is you say you press save and a symbol crash, and every single change that you have made will be lost, and you will have to redo any port changes. So what I'll do is I'll just press save here, and I'll go to the mode again, press save there, and I'll just do it for every single one of these because. If you don't, if you don't save every change you make, things will go wrong. For instance, with the rocket pods here, I forgot to save when I done when I changed the HLMT file that it uses, and then because of that, it led to a little issue later on, where my mode changes weren't taking effect. Right. So, once again, just to reiterate, before you go in game, make sure you save everything you've changed. When you are in game and you're doing your trial and error, port your changes. And then when you've got everything right, end the game and then save your changes in assembly. And then once that's done, your changes will be saved, everything will take effect and you'll be able to go back in your game, spawn your, your vehicle with your new turret and everything will be okay. If the tutorial hasn't been too confusing for you, if it's been fairly well done, please give the video a like, maybe a comment, maybe even subscribe if you want. If you need any help, please just leave a comment and I will try to help if I can. And uh, I will see you in my next tutorial.